Okay, welcome back, talking about variation. Let's continue. So, let's just go ahead and start on another area and look at what else we know about variation. So, here's another example that I'm going to use. And, let me see. I'll just go ahead and use Boston right here. And right size it. Bring it in. And I'll just use this area right here. Again, never been here either, but looks nice so let me go ahead and load up my sectionals and while it's loading up let me see okay so let's just pick another airport here let me pick I'll go from this airport and again I just wanted to say for my overseas viewers I apologize because all my examples for the most part are going to be basically in the United States in the northern hemisphere because fortunately somebody was very 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 kind to upload all the sectionals for the United States and I can use that as a great learning tool if anybody has any sectionals that they overlay for their prospective continent then uh, I'd be happy to take a look at those but for right now this is really all we have to deal with okay so let's talk cause let's say I wanted to go from this airport right here which I believe is Greenwood and we are going to be flying to this airport right here which is St. John. Now what we have right here is we have an initial true course of 295 degrees. So we'll just go ahead and put that down. 295. And what we need to figure out is we need to figure out what our variation is going to be. Well here's the interesting thing. We got two isogonic lines that we can use we can use this one, the 18 and a half degree line, and we have this one, which is the 19 degree line, westerly variation. Now, which one are you going to use? Well, are you going to use the one, well, you're going to use the closest isogonic line, but at the beginning of your trip, you're closer to your 19 degree line, and at the end of your trip, you're going to be closer to the 8 and a half degree line. So, which one would you use? Well, if I was doing this, I would go ahead and use my 18 and a half degree line, westerly variation. And the reason for that is because you can think of your isogonic lines kind of like contour lines on a map. And what contour lines do, they just basically measure changes in elevation. However, between two contour lines, it's implied that the elevation is going to be constant. So you can think of isogonic lines as the same thing. So in this region right here, the variation is going to be 18 and a half degrees westerly until you hit this line right here. And then this isogonic line is going to be 19 degrees westerly variation from this point on until you hit the next one and so on and so forth. So you're probably wondering, well, why is it where this region is 18 and a half degrees? Why isn't it this region 19 degrees? And that one is, you know, 19 and a half or whatever. Well, the reason is, is because since it's westerly variation, your magnetic north is going to lie counterclockwise to your geographical north pole. So what happens is, is since your magnetic north pole is lying counterclockwise to your geographical north pole as you proceed this direction that direction being southwest and northeast your magnetic variation is going to get worse so it would make sense that it would go from 18 and a half and this side would get worse to 19 and a half, 19 degrees this worse so it's important to establish which region is which as far as considering where your isogonic line is going to influence. So in this case, 18 and a half degrees it is. Alright, so we've already figured out it's 141. So 141, and I'll go ahead and pop up my little tool, 141 minus 18 and a half degrees gives you a magnetic heading of 122 and a half degrees. So, let's see 
how extreme this variation is. Let me go ahead and take the sectional law. Oh, well, actually not yet. Let me go and zoom in. And then let me do the little trick again where I measure my geographical north pole in relation to my magnetic north. So that is 360 right there. Here's my little path. Right there. Zoom out. Take the sectional away. And we see that is our variation right there. So what are what do we learn about variation so far? Well, we're starting to see how very important it is to account for it in your true course. We see that the closer to the agonic line that you are, the less variation that you have to put in. And we see that the more northerly you are, the worse variation gets. And that would make sense because we are getting closer to your geographical north pole. So let's just go ahead and see what else I got. Let's see how bad the variation does get. Let us load up my sectionals. And let us find one for all the way west, almost all the way up. Let's go for this area right here. And let's see how bad the variation can get. Alright, so while we wait for this to uh, load up, I think there's a brand new region of the map that my sectional is having to load up. Alright, so what we got here is we got 18 degrees easterly variation. And that is Seattle, Washington. Okay. So we got 18 degrees easterly variation. And again, we can do our little trick where we'll match up the geographical north pole with the magnetic north. And find out what our variation is. Oh, well, I didn't want to do that. Line is from here to here. And take away a sectional. And there we go. That is variation right there. So hopefully, for purposes of being in the United States and living on the North Coast or the Northern Hemisphere, hopefully, we have discussed variation pretty good in depth. Um, so that is why it's important to find variation. I hope this video helped you out, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, later.